Dear Mrs. President, dear fellow postmasters, and dear guests. Now, a human is by nature a social creature. If a man unsocial and unsocial natural in that extent, he is either unsatisfactory or superhuman. This was a quote from Aristotle. Now, I suppose we don't have too many superhuman persons in here right now, so I was, I, my talk, my speech is about something that uh, for you, fellow social creatures, is very important. Uh, I want to talk about our interaction, our conversations, and to be more specific, I want to talk about different conversational styles different people have. And the three components of these conversational styles I personally find the most interesting. The first one is pauses between phrases. The second one is degree of directness in people's speaking and behaving. And the third one is the position you prefer to take, either a power position or coldness position related to other people. Now, pauses. I was rather interested and surprised to learn that different people have different comfortable pauses, uh, the duration of pauses, that is. Um, uh, though the pause between phrases is about the individual, uh, there is a rough pattern that southern nations, such as Italians, Spaniards, and people from Caucasus, have rather short pauses. Uh, say, when some Caucasus people talk with each other or with other people, they can interrupt you easily, or they can talk over you easily, and consider it rather a normal thing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the northern people, say a Scandinavian man and woman, uh, have rather long pause. So when he or she speaks to you, he will give you enough room to express your deal fully, and then some time before they start speaking. Now, I want to tell you a personal story uh, to illustrate the idea. Uh, my mother is originally from Azerbaijan, speaking about southern nations and short courses. Now, <laughs> my grandmother once sent me to a local shop to buy some bread. So I went to the shop and stood in the line. The problem was that I get to the counter. The counter operator decided to stop talking with a friend of hers. Uh, and I, as a well-behaved man and boy, decided to wait for her to stop. So, to make long story short, I ended up being closed <laughs> in the shop with the women still talking. Luckily for me, my grandmother came in a while to collect me from the shop. After that, I was told that when you want to tell something and people are talking, you should interrupt them confidently. Because if you won't interrupt them, you end up being ignored. Now, the story is about the difference between pauses comfortable for different people. But at the same time, it's about uh, the degree of directness of different people. Say, when I'm finished with my project, some of you, one of you, dear friends, can come out and say, Denise, uh, your project uh, was good for nothing. And the only good thing about it is that it is finally finished. <laughs> and another one can come out and say, I find a kind word or two to me. Before they start carefully talking there, uh, you should probably prepare better for your projects, or you should probably structureize your projects a little better. Uh, some people can find the first straight to the point style a bit aggressive and rude, and others can find the second weak, soft, uh, walking around style a bit uh, not effective and just irritating. Now, the point is. It's not just about how you talk to people, how you interact with people. It's about how people perceive you as well. And the interesting, in my opinion, model of how people can perceive you is they can perceive you from position of power and the position of closeness. Say, a little boy. Imagine a little boy coming to, uh, say, Igor. <laughs> and tell him, Igor, Igor, let's go play a ball. If Igor stands in the position of power, he can actually tell a boy, what? what are you talking to? You're a little boy. I'm a mystery reader for you. And if he stands in the position of closeness, he may actually be glad that the boy isn't intimidated with an age difference and approaches his, as his friend. 
And on the whole, when people, different people, say a husband and a wife uh, have different positions about the same situation, they may misunderstand each other. And on the whole, when people have different conversational styles with uh, different poses, uh, different level of uh, directness, and the position they take about the issue, they can misunderstand each other unless they take into account the probably difference of their conversational styles. So, I was actually glad that I learned the knowledge, that I gave the knowledge, because it helped me to reevaluate, reassess some of my past decisions about people. Because when, for example, I'm talking to someone and he interrupts me, or she interrupts me, I almost automatically label him or her as rude, impolite, and she may have her pauses between phrases a bit shorter than mine. So when you are aware of difference between conversational styles, you can understand people better. And if you can understand people, understand people better, <laughs> you can repair some damaged relationships, you can strengthen some current relationships you have, and you can build some new healthy relationships. The knowledge is good for me, made some good for me, the knowledge can probably make some good for you.